before we move to recurrent disease, uh, I want to talk about this idea of adding a laparib to GUG218 or bevacizumab. And that's being tested, and that will be uh, a report, hopefully, uh, within the next year or so. Tell us about this study, which you know as Paola 1. Paola. Pa you keep. Tell. Paola 1. Paola. Pa pa what do I say? Paola. You do, you do say it funny. <laughs> Go ahead, Paola. You just say it loud. Paola. Say it loud. Paola. Paola. So this is an important study. It is a randomized study. It's it's uh, entirely uh, done in Europe, where uh, bevacizumab has been incorporated into frontline maintenance in almost all countries for many years, and so it, it is the standard of care. So all patients received uh, platinum taxane chemotherapy with bevacizumab. And then at the time that they finished, if they were in complete or partial response, they're randomized to continue bevacizumab maintenance plus placebo, or they get bevacizumab maintenance uh, for 15, 12 cycles, because uh, that's the standard in Europe, and 24 months of Olaparib, just like Solo 1. With uh, uh, primary endpoint is investigator-assessed progression-free survival, stratification factor is BRCA patients. And there's, you know, it's a, there's a fair number of BRCA patients, not over-enriched, but there's a fair number of BRCA patients on that study. And of course, this is pre-SOLA-1, so you wouldn't randomize a BRCA patient to a non olaparib arm anymore, but we're going to have that, that data uh, coming out. So this is not really just a me-too sort of study. There is uh, real preclinical and translational evidence that uh, there's synergy between PARP inhibition and antiangiogenesis agents uh, with, uh, through a number of mechanisms uh, that lead to downregulation of um, DNA repair proteins and induction of kind of a BRCA ness behavior that then will respond to a PARP inhibitor. Uh, so, so that's going to be an important study mainly, and it'll be hard to tell. I think, honestly, if you ask me, I think it's going to be positive. I don't think they're going to break out the subgroups. They have to. Well. They may not, but if they do, I'm most interested in the BRCA wild type because I think that's exactly. really who's going to benefit. Absolutely. It's going to be hard to say. Which is the majority of patients. Which is the majority. It's going to be hard to say in a BRCA patient whether or not addition of bevacizumab adds anything over. To 50 months. Um, yeah. Be, uh, over Olaparib alone. So that's going to be the unanswered question so, there. So, Brian, I hope I say it later. Pa 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 Paola. Paola. If Paola 1 is positive, meaning that you add Olaparib to the 15 months of bevacizumab, to a level that's acceptable for regulatory. And then the boost trial, yeah, boost. which is 30 months of bevacizumab versus 15. How, are you going to stop the elaborate at 15 months and then continue bevacizumab for an additional 15 months? Or are you going to try to make a case for giving both for 30 months? Well, the elaborate goes 24 months. 24, OK, there you go. Good to know. 24 cycles. 24 cycles. Yeah. But still, the bevacizumab could will, go longer. Could go longer. Could go so, longer. So, just to highlight, what are we talking about here? We're talking about two, th 24 months, 30 months for ovarian cancer first line. Things that we've never talked about before. <laughs> <laughs> how, how great is that? Yeah. How great yeah. is that? Thank so, you so, for that. So, so that qualifies the fact yeah. that I don't know the right answer. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, 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 I think if we could keep the elaparib, I think it's the active drug. Keeping it on longer probably wouldn't make sense. But you know, the boost trial will be interesting to see those results as well.